For 150 years, Children's National Hospital has provided exceptional care and groundbreaking research. Please donate today to give children and healthcare heroes a reason to believe this holiday season. Visit childrensnational.org slash holiday. Holidays are here, and so is fashionable fitness. Gift yourself a Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 5G, a phone that folds in half to literally stand on its own. Pair it with the Galaxy Watch 4 for ultimate wellness and wow factor. Check health stats, flex personal records. Over 90 activities can be tracked, like biking, swimming, golfing, and more. Invest in yourself with tech made to crush goals. Holidays open up with Galaxy. Shop it all at Samsung.com. 5G connection and availability may vary. Check with Carrier. Products sold separately. That long day behind you, good times lie ahead. With company worth keeping, that'll bash a smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open, you'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk. Music, medicine, then some The talk, 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 the tavern The song's over Here we come Welcome to the tavern We'll get to the topic and discussion in just a moment Just want to let everybody know This is an adult show with adult topics, adult humor And in other words, uh, we drink, we smoke, we swear And we laugh at things we probably shouldn't But we do it together For those listening to the podcast, we record the podcast on our live stream at twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk and have a live interactive chat audience. You might hear the sound of the bell, and that means I want to interrupt somebody to read a question or comment. For those on the live stream, we won't read off everything you put in chat, but we'll try to get to the most relevant or the most amusing, but hopefully some combination of the both. Now, while we introduce ourselves, go ahead and let us know what your vices are tonight. My vices are... And look, I'm holding my toasted note so I don't forget the toast tonight because we forgot the outro toast on the other one that we did the other day. Yeah, Um, I I am still enjoying Bowman Brothers as I did in the last episode and a CAO Brasilia cigar. So that's that. Everybody put your vices in the chat. Andrea, what do you got tonight? So this week... My thing of choice is the Ale of Ginger by Bolin and Kraken, Um, but not just any Kraken. It's a black roast coffee rum Kraken. How about you, Ed? Me? I'm here, Ed, Master of the Dad Bod. I'm (laughs) enjoying uh, Appalachian Ginger Beer and... uh, Basil Hayden's Kentucky Kentucky Bourbon. Nice. If there's any other time. There's there's a few things here in chat. Where to win is having black tea with apple cider. That's interesting. Uh, and Goblin says his vice is thick milfs and IPAs. That's uh, some pretty awesome stuff there. And by the way, uh, okay. during the intro with the pre-show conversation with with our our chat folks here. We were talking about knitting and crocheting, and Snoochie said, I crocheted an eye slash, or a mask slash eye cover, so I can sleep discreetly at work as soon as someone entered the room. Just had to pull it down six inches to cover, like, the mouth and stuff instead, so that's clever. That's clever. So tonight's topic is basically reclaiming your life after the pandemic, because everything's winding down and moving behind us. Um, besides a few things popping up here and there. So, what I really want to talk about, and not just this, but this is one of the things, I've heard so many people over the past (laughs) year and a half who are like, oh, I was so going to do this thing this year that I've been putting off so many years, and if it wasn't for the pandemic, I'd be doing it right now. What's that mean, Andrea? Oh, the toast. See, I put down my toasted note. See, thank you, Andrea. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> or were you were you drinking ginger ale because of that? I don't know what she do. Okay. Um, hey, here's to enjoying life, no matter what it throws at you. Yes. There we go. I drink the red. Mm. Marlene said, "Only people without kids 
everybody I've heard saying this, oh, I was going to go this place, I was going to do that thing. Now, it's, of course, easier without kids, that's for sure. But I have throw back at it. I don't even know what that means, John. And hello, John. Good to see you. Hey, what's up, John? I'll drink to that, too. So, Andrea, some of the stuff <laughs> you wanted to talk about was how life has changed now that we're coming out of the pandemic, how it's different from how it was 18 months ago. Well, what I would really like to, you know, bring up is since everything has happened and it's coming out of it, has has your priorities changed? Has the way you do things changed? Not just because of that, but that has started you on this path of doing things differently that you're continuing to do? I know it is for me. What kind of things for you, Andrea? Okay, so... Well, um, I know a lot of people have started raising chickens in their yard and gardening <laughs> and doing all these things. I don't do the chicken thing, but I do garden. And, and I, I have before everything. But I think I've decided to put myself as a little bit more of a priority and not deal with the bullshit of other people and being treating, treated bad because... This, if anything, this crisis showed me people are assholes more than usual, and it, it's not good. And I don't want to be treated that way when I'm trying to help someone, even though it's my job. Now, do you want to give something more specific? Because I believe you're talking to your you were a retail worker during the pandemic. So, is that what you're talking about specifically? I'm not doing retail anymore. Right. I am now out of retail. Because people are I, assholes. Yeah, well, people were assholes before, but they, like, I've seen violence. I've dealt with violence. I've dealt with assault. I've dealt with this shit because people have to have this right now or, oh, I'm tired of staying home with my kids. I can't stand them or the person I'm with. So I'm going to come in here and be an asshole to you. Yeah, I, no. And let me read a couple comments here, which will bring up some other points. Uh, Wordwin says, I actually managed to do a few things over the last year on my to-do list for years. Now I feel lost and confused. Goblin says, I elevated my liver enzymes and bought a house during the pandemic. Um, okay. Marlene says, definitely don't want to work fully back on site for work anymore. Remote is too nice. That is something that's going to be different. And they're already doing psychology studies of how people who are now working remote don't get the face time and socialization they need with their fellow teammates, though they, so they feel shoved aside, ignored, passed over, and that sort of thing. Whereas you get more goof off time if you're actually on site and can laugh with the boss in person. Mm -hmm. I, I actually heard something, uh, a study, I heard it on the radio the other day. I didn't read it on Facebook. I actually heard it on the radio and I didn't stay on a holiday and express. Um, apparently a study had been done and it was in the study. It was if you work in an office, take a tour around the office at least once a week to show yourself and greet people because it improves your self-image at work and people actually start to like you more at work. Hmm. It's a generally fair point for everything across the board. Working from home, I guess. When I'm working from home, considering all the cats I have, I definitely take time to walk around at least once a week and show my face to the cats. <laughs> <laughs> So they like me better, or at least realize I'm the one that give them food sometimes. I'm going to read a few more comments. John says, love some goof off time with the boss, because John is the boss. Uh, <laughs> Crystal says, remote work is better for the planet. Goblin says, not getting FaceTime in the office study sounds like a lot of out-of-touch middle managers that are scared, the, scared they'll lose their job if they're not butts in seats. Um... Marlene says, I think it really showed how difficult basic discussions can be, even with family. 
While some may have experienced that with politics before, but managed to ignore it when it got difficult, but with pandemic, one really needed to have hard arguments with family and no way to avoid it, as everyone was affected. <laughs> well, okay. The, my main thing about everything that went on is people are bitchy. I don't want to be stuck at home with my kids. I don't want to be stuck at home with my significant other spouse, what have you. Okay, if you can't stand to be in the same area as them, why did you have those kids? Why are you with that person? Yep, that's what I said a year ago when that started popping up. I was like, huh? That doesn't make sense to me. I'd love to be stuck at home with my wife 24-7 and the bills to be paid, but it doesn't work out that way. Same here. I, I'm very happy to be stuck at home with Travis and the cat. So, I can do with a little less vomiting on the cat's part, but other than that, I'm very <laughs> happy. Um, and that's something we actually said before the pandemic, when people like they come to work, oh, God, I'm so glad to be out of the house because of the whoever, you know, kids, family, parents, uh, spouses, Why? Um, yeah. whatever, pets even sometimes. Oh, I just that animal always does this thing. Like, why are you living with people if they right. make you unhappy? Um, which, by the way, I was one of those people in my younger years. I had roommates and then I realized, fuck that. I will live alone and have less money, but I'll be happier. <laughs> and by the way, Snoochie says, post-pandemic, the wife is finally opening up her fabric storefront, which she put off due to the pandemic. And that's great. There are going to be opportunities like that. <laughs> John, being supportive of our conversation, says, I'd love to be stuck at home with each of you and your wives. We'll be over soon. Come on over, John. You're always welcome, man. There we go. It'll be a good time. As a matter of fact, I'll drink to that. <laughs> there we go. Oh, hell, me too. <laughs> Fine. Peer pressure. We'll drink to that. I've just never understood people putting off life for no good reason. And then when there is a good reason to put off life, they act like they would have been doing all the shit that they never did when there was nothing to stop them. Like, why would this year have been different if there wasn't a pandemic? You were just like going, yeah. oh, now I have a valid excuse so I could bitch about it. And I'm like, you're just lying to yourself. Um, yeah, I mean, I could say that we didn't get to go visit Kevin again, which we did one time and we were planning on, but this happened and everything was closed, so we cannot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and by the way, my life changed so little during the pandemic. Same so, here. Yeah, so little. It's because I, I love being home. And if I'm going out, it's for a specific purpose. Sure, Andrea and I haven't gone to a movie theater, which we did every three or four months, went out and had dinner and a movie. But it wasn't a regular thing, so it doesn't much matter. We could just as easily create a junk food buffet, which we've done. And we did. Yeah. Christmas. And, and I'm going to read some more comments because there's some good comments here. Um, Wordwin says my immediate family was adopt was adopted by another family a couple decades ago. About 10 years ago, we put a no politics rule in place for holiday dinners. Sounds wise. Mm -hmm. Snoochie says, our life was relatively unaffected, but actually turned out profitable for us. When Hobby Lobby and Michaels and stuff closed, online sales went up, which was her only source mm -hmm. of funds. And this is an interesting comment. And I'm going to try to read through all these, so I'm going to skip Green Goblins and come back to it. Raven says, I love being home with my family. Word of Wind says, my major difference last year was less visits with friends and a lot more paranoia. Marlene says, definitely one up the paranoia throughout the country. It gave us an excuse. Goblin says, your family can make you unhappy sometimes, but you're in it for the long run. Maybe you're unhappy because of other life shit and blame it on your family and roommates. Um, I'd like to comment on uh, uh, Weird Win. A major difference last year was less visits with friends and family and a lot more paranoia. Um, the The... I don't know. I'm such a fucking recluse. I camp. That that's my enjoyment. That that hurt me last year. We had to, they closed the parks and 
and I had to cancel three camp trips, which mm. didn't make sense to me when my nearest neighbor is like 50 yards away. That didn't make a lot of sense to me. But as far as the friends and family went, the people that I love and like having around in my life, that really didn't change throughout the pandemic. I mean, we still had a couple of get togethers. Travis, you and Andrea came up. We had Teresa's birthday party. We even had another little gathering here. We just kind of like, we love each other. Screw this. If we make each other sick and we all die together, okay, we'll die happy together, you know? Life is about living it, not avoiding it. Yeah. And, we'll uh, see. go ahead, Andrea. I, I didn't get to stay home like a lot of people. I couldn't do remote work. And my <laughs> hours increased so much, like so much over time because they were short staffed and everything. And I was very happy for that. So I paid off a lot of debt, got a lot of things taken care of. So it did have a positive effect for me, well, kind of. Crystal says, I personally enjoy the six feet rule. Can we keep that one? Yeah. If we're not about yeah. to make out, you don't need to be close enough I can lean in and smell your breath. Or if God forbid, not oh, lean in and smell your breath. Huh? When you came here, what was the first thing we did? Bumped crotches. We exchanged hugs. Come on. Right. Well, we did a little crotch button. But <laughs> well, but during the hug. Yeah. But yeah. 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 We, we exchanged hugs. But it didn't matter. Then anytime. What's that, Andrea? I was going to say, you, unless you're going to make out. Oh, you need to tell these cats. <laughs> either make out or get out of my face. <laughs> That's right. If you're going to sit that close, you better like give me some sandpaper tongue, baby. Um <laughs> Yeah, in line. Can we not be up on each other? If if you could feel my boner when I when you're standing in front of me, maybe maybe we need a little more space. Well, in this case, I'd be like well, a ten foot rule. Yeah, <laughs> some of us, you know. Hey. And here's an interesting comment. Snoochy says some of our less social friends became even more socially awkward and aggressive after one year of no social interaction. So that's interesting. So I read an article that I don't know if you know what Animal Crossing is, yes. the video game. Apparently that had helped a lot of people that were having issues that helped them be a little bit better mentally and socialize. And I'm just thinking, we do this on Discord. There's Skype. There's all these other things. How are people so isolated when all of this technology is around and you can socialize and be you know, safe? So let's see here. Um, <laughs> that's great. Somebody was told to work at home after they came into work with a six foot stick, poked anyone that got close. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to read Goblin's comment here. Uh, Goblin says, not trying to be confrontational, but it's always a great way to start a sentence saying, <laughs> fuck it. If we get sick and die together, then so be it is damn exceptionalism. To respond to that, Goblin, you know when you say "but," everything you said before that is bullshit, right? <laughs> <laughs> and no, I'm not trying to be exceptional about it. Okay, it's just we care enough about each other. It was worth the risk to give one another a hug, to shake a hand, or whatever it was. Get together and enjoy one another's company. So, but it's not like everybody was licking each other's face and being like right. really insane. <laughs> that cost extra. It's, uh, <laughs> and and what I'm seeing here with the conversation is we're talking about then now that we're back around people. Um. Mm -hmm. So we'll get even closer now. We'll get naked together. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, you know, how has things changed now? How are you reclaiming your life? How are you moving forward? For me, other than not having to wear that damn mask anymore, that that's it. Because my life really didn't change. I'm such a damn recluse. I have my little group of people, right? and I saw them all the way through. So it's really not going to change much that it's over. It's a... Uh... Uh, that's why you hug when the volcano erupts. Oh, it's true. It's, it's, yeah. Sorry, with the volcano erupting, I was reading the body language, the standing so close you could feel the boner. I thought that was a euphemism. I got confused for a moment there. Uh, the thing is, 
I like people, to cuddle afterwards. What, Andrea? People, not all of them follow the rules. and Right, exactly. So, like, I would see people pull their mask down to sneeze or to cough on whatever is in front of them. I did that the early on. I was in a store, and I had to sneeze. I was like, and without thinking, I just pulled the mask down, sneezed, and was like, well, that defeats the fucking purpose, but I don't want to sneeze in this thing up next to my face. <laughs> well, it's one thing if you sneeze into your elbow because that's what they've taught you to do. But to actually just do it on the things in front of you, I mean, some people don't care. Didn't care. Some people still don't. Mm. I don't know. We'll mm. see. We'll see. See, I've made changes during the pandemic, but they're changes I would have made even if there wasn't a pandemic. And that's like, you know, I decided to learn some musical instruments. And during the pandemic, I did a lot of writing, but that was my plan before it even hit. So, okay, you know what? No, hold on. I got a comment. Snoochie says, I'd be afraid of porta cans, but I digress. No, I, I think that's valid right there. Porta potties, Jiffy Johns, whatever you want to call them. Yes, Andrea. But is he is that comment? Uh, are they having that comment for the six foot boner or because of germs? <laughs> the porta can. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did you see the comment? Oh, uh, there was there was quite a few. Uh, yeah, uh, with the six foot boner. You know, if you feel the boner six feet away. Uh, Snoochie says, if you got a six-foot boner, there might be other concerns. Green Goblin says, six-foot boner would probably make you pass out for, from blood loss. Probably make a lot of people pass out for many different reasons. Um, so so it was in regard to the six-foot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Right? That is like the grossest movie. Would that you, would you care to like read it out loud for the podcast people? Okay. So, weird one says, ever since seeing zombie ass toilet of dead, toilet of the dead, I've been terrified of porta potties. That's a Japanese horror movie. That one I couldn't watch all the way through. I had to turn it off. Amazon it Prime hard. Goblin. Two nights ago, I paused on it for a moment as I was looking at the other stuff, and Andrew's like, "We're not watching zombie ass toilet of the dead. I've already seen it. It's horrifying. Makes me vomit." It's. I can deal with blood and gore, but when somebody barfs on someone else and then they bar no, I can't do that. Mm -mm. Nope. Well, isn't there times like where the toilet erupts? It, it's just it's a shitty oh. movie. There's a lot of shit. And a lot of <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. There we go. Go check it out. I, I recommend you check it out. But you've been warned. It's. <laughs> We've got two people like, well, I'm going to have to find it. And Marlene's like, yeah, no, no need. <laughs> oh, Marlene. So, <laughs> I, I believe, where do I, I believe Andrea saw the whole thing. Did you watch the whole yeah. thing? You cut it off? You didn't? So it gets insane at the end. So apparently whatever insane stuff you saw at the beginning doesn't compare. Okay, maybe I'll try to watch it again, but... I'll have to eat a bag of popcorn and pour it in a bowl and give her the bag in case she needs to get sick. Actually, I still have those barf bags from when I used to drive Uber. I kept them in the back of the car for, you know. Oh, sorry. Well, great. <laughs> I rang a bell. <laughs> now we're prepared. Moving on. <laughs> okay, so if we're kind of like over, you know, like, oh, this is how our life is anyway... How would we like to see other people change their lives after listening to them for almost a year and a half? I see Andrea rolling her eyes, taking a deep breath. Go. Be a little more courteous. Mm. Like you were supposed to be enjoying everything. Go do the things you said. Oh, well, I can't do it because of this. Quit making excuses. It's just excuses. Live life. Yeah, all the way through. It's been a fucking excuse. Just all the way through. <laughs> it's yeah, we, we tend to live our life and it'll continue. 
no matter what. What, Ed? And it'll, con- it'll continue. Life? The excuse. Or the excuses, yeah. Yeah, I think the people... I hope the DOJ goes nuts. Department of Justice? In what way? Well... I mean, generally anything yeah. politics is already well, going nuts. Think- uh-huh. When they when they're saying okay social distance no large groups no because it's not safe and then people would gather to protest <laughs> yeah that made a lot of fucking sense and, and people got hurt some people got seriously hurt some people have died from it. so people are going to do what people do yeah exactly people, Individual people can be smart, but as a group, they're dumb as shit. I think we should all get together and protest large groups. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. But I don't want to go around all those people. But we have to have small signs, so people have to come really close to be able to read them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I think this works out great. We can make sure we don't cluster in the street. There's too much room. Cluster in small alleys and doorways only. Um, Goblin says, Lord of the Flies is a great example of hive mind. Yeah. By the way, if anybody's wondering why you keep on hearing 2019, there's certain keywords like sick and cough and sneeze that will trigger that sound in the stream just so everybody knows why that's happening hey john stop on by man that's next (laughs) you're always welcome you know now what's great about that is my automated mod bot cogsley says well slap my ass and call me sally and then john says we can all get together for an orgy while traveling it's usually best to pack light when it comes to money Carrying some cash and having an alternative like Zelle is a great idea. Zelle's an easy way to send and receive money with people you trust at any U.S. bank. It's already in thousands of different banking apps, and it's money straight into your bank account in minutes fast. Look for Zelle in your banking app today. Safe travels. So I don't know if that's a general comment or if he's just, uh, you know, Cogsley needs some love, too. He's talking about the group gathering. Who knows? That's that's true. Werdewin says we could do social distancing so the group looks larger when we're protesting large groups. <laughs> that was done. What's there that? There we go. That was done. Was it? Did they social distance in the protest? Yeah. Well, not in protest, but never mind. We'll we'll leave politics out of it. Okay, we'll move away from that. It's uh, only we agree to uh, swap spit. Says Green Goblin. I've got three jars of mine already. How many you got to trade? Oh, God. (laughs) I got rid of all my spit when I stopped dipping, so. Marlene says, talking about people becoming socially awkward, hitting on a chat bot. (laughs) (laughs) At least you'll you'll know if it has a virus. (laughs) You know what? Depends on how good your virus scan is. (laughs) We rely on cat scans because we have cats. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, so I've been watching a lot more TV when, it, you know, since everything happened. Um, I watch a lot of Netflix anyway and Hulu. But I've noticed, so I know we had this, the um, coronavirus. Uh-huh. Before that, it was like flying flu and bird flu, which didn't have nearly the effect as this. But I am... I'm looking at commercials now on the things I'm watching. I don't know how old a lot of people are, if they've been around. But remember the big HIV right. crisis? Mm-hmm. And now I'm looking, and they have commercials. They have come a long way with the drugs where people are living longer mm-hmm. and they're functioning, and it's even like making it undetectable. With science and pharmaceuticals and all that, with this, so with stuff like this, give it a couple more years. It, it won't even be around. Yeah, this won't, but the next one will because will. nature takes care of itself and mankind is getting out of hand. 
So something else will be around in a few more years to try to reduce the population. But then the smart ones that do what they need to do to stay safe, they do it long enough and avoid the death, there'll be a cure. So it's okay. That is a whole topic on itself there, Ed, is is mankind out of control? You know, is curing all the things really the best idea? It's, uh, it that could be an inflammatory well, I have topic. Thoughts on that, but I'm not going to do that now. I have a lot of them. <laughs> Snoochie, <laughs> this is why you do okay in the tavern. Best cure is to remove all warning labels. It's, yep. I have stories about that. It's, uh, because back in my day, put all the chemicals under the damn sink and kids learned not to go under the sink and get into stuff. Well, the stuff they were prescribing before. Well, they got their ass beat if they did. What about prescribing stuff, Andrea? They would prescribe cocaine. <laughs> well, not back in Travis's day. <laughs> I've been around a long <laughs> time. Up there, yeah. I'm just, it just, some of the things, and a leeching, or, um, what? I think they just got tired of the huh? person crying, and they're like, I will cut you if you keep crying. I'm sorry, I will give you a bleeding procedure if you keep whining. <laughs> um. Right? Ghost in the blood. My leg is haunted. I think I need some cocaine. That's right. It's, uh, yeah, Marlene points out climate may do us in. Wordwin says, don't worry, the sun's output is gradually increasing in approximately 500 million years. The earth will be a cinder anyway. It's, uh, oh, no, 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 no. We're so intelligent, we're going to be able to prevent that. We're going to get a right? waste cincher. <laughs> 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 Just put a Dyson sphere around it with channels. I don't know. It's... We just have to put vents out in every, you know, so many years as we go around the sun, you'll feel the burst of energy keep us going a little further. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Marlene says, good old hysteria and its cures. Oh, yeah. Mm. And does insurance pay for that? It's, uh, you can order it online from Amazon now. It's, mm. uh, by the way, for anybody that doesn't know, hysteria is a condition where mostly, for the most part, women were said to have it. And, uh, yeah, the cure was basically uh, get her off, as in orgasm. That's why vibrators were invented. Right. Yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> I don't think that works at work. I'm feeling a little hysteria. i got to step away for a few minutes. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Old cures, digital manipulation, and cocaine. <laughs> Especially with yeah. the twitchiness that comes with it. What is star lifting? Because with the expanding oh, no, sun, Word of Wind says star lifting is the best method. Oh, no. I'm going to Google it. <laughs> Green Goblin says, being a doctor back when it was cool, this dildo will help. Have some cocaine. Leeches? <laughs> I can see him doing that with like a white lab coat. See, I'm having a flashback to a million ways to die in the West. Hmm. Okay. Ah, thank you, John. Yeah. Where you bleed the energy off uh, from the star. Ah, there you go. Put a leech on it. That's right. <laughs> Try and star leech. Yeah. <laughs> They had those in Star, Star Trek The Next Generation where they were sucking off the warp nacelles. Sucking off yeah. might have been the wrong term. What, Andrea? So, no. you know, basically starlifting and colonizing the stars and galaxies. Yeah. I don't like to pack my shit and move, like, across the country, much less across the galaxy. I don't know. Th things are so damn stupid and ignorant in this world. I may volunteer to go to Mars. I don't know. I saw that movie. I don't want to eat potatoes grown in poop. <laughs> I 
Well, there we go. See, use brute force magnetic fields to siphon off some of the sun's surface, produces a lot of energy, stabilizes the star. Lots of, it's a leaching. It's a sun leaching. Totally going to cosplay a 1800s dock next convention. Yeah, you should do that for a steampunk convention. Lab coat okay. in the style of the dodgy watch seller in an alley. <laughs> yes. So, yes. And, and I see it says fitted with dildos and hard drugs. And then you need a jar and get some leeches. That's great. Elise's methods were more scientific than the Drupka Cunley. Snoochie, get to define that one, on, or we'll have to Google it. Marlene says, that's what the viruses are waiting for. Ever read the selfish gene theory? Mm -hmm. And I'm just imagining Green Goblin in that white lab coat, he's like, Psst, hey, want to buy a hysteria device? <laughs> Flip open the coat. Or a watch. Or the letter E. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sesame Street flashback. Oh, God. That's great. See, I, I do miss conventions. I do miss that. And the dressing up. I could do that here, and I do dress up, but, you know, not the same. Don't forget the jar of sterilized maggots, says uh, Ordowin. Always good for anybody with a stump. Mag maggots are good. Right. Ed likes to jar things. Yeah. You can, <laughs> you can use them to clean your wound, and after you're done, you can pickle them. Hey, yeah. I knew you pickled everything, but damn. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm going to read this out loud. So, this is Snoochie helping educate everybody on Drupka Kunli. Quote, he is credited with introducing the practice of phallus paintings in Bhutan and placing statues of them on rooftops to drive away evil spirits. Because of this power, his penis was named the Thunderbolt of Flaming Wisdom and could purify women's evil thoughts, oh, sorry, could pure women's evil thoughts to purify their soul. I gotta remember that shit. <laughs> it's taken Baby, over. I'm trying to drive away your evil spirits. Come on here. <sighs> It's true. And Goblin says, I miss conventions. Dressing up at home doesn't get the same dopamine hit as being praised by other nerds. Oh, and then Marlene educates us on selfish gene theory, says that basically our DNA that encodes the information for our body just created us through evolution so it can spread. Now that the molecule itself is just waiting for us to reach Mars so it can keep replicating there, similar to viruses. Basically comparing okay. humans to viruses and... Yeah, it's all of all of nature is just a matter of trying to spread further, faster. How do you know yep. the galaxy isn't just the bloodstream of some bigger creature? You don't. I think there's certain politicians that would claim they're the bigger creature, and we're nothing more than a bacteria mm -hmm. on the body. That I would claim are the bigger creature. That's for damn sure. Mm. Twenty-three nineteen. <laughs> we have it's not an uncommon or a new theory there, Goblin, that we're just a virus. Even the Matrix refers to us that way. Yeah. I oh, think it's yeah. pretty, you know, narcissistic to think we are the great end-all be-all of what the most intelligent, because we're not. Bam. Yep, Goblin, we are the baddies. Because if you look at the planet, we're not doing a great thing for it. We're much more locust-like or virus-like than good for the environment. It's not just we're, the environment, but it's, it's the planet as a whole. Well, that's what I mean by environment. Yeah. I'm not just talking climate or anything. Yeah. Um, so, word one says, all of nature is a process to spread um, tardigrades. That's the little bear things, right? Right. So, okay, I believe that because I just read an article that they shot some out in Mars to see what would happen. See how they would survive. So, it's like we're planting the little seeds. 
We'll no. see what happens. Marlene says humans are not directly a virus, but more like we don't have free will as such, but that our drive to advance just has us expand the territory for some basic, basic chemical components. I pointed to that. The human sex drive, we're still animals. This is why sex sells, because we're still animals, and we are driven by these chemicals, these emotions, and it's all to expand our, our, our genes, our, our species, um, even to the point of the detriment of ourselves. Yes. Oh, wow. New study on uh, tardigrades. Can you, you can physically shoot them and they actually die. This sounds like some drunk, drunk biology students at a college <laughs> went, <shoot them. laughs> let's, <laughs> let's do this. Let's see what happens if we do this. Get the gun. <laughs> Get the Petri dish. <laughs> but they're so tiny. See, no rednecks were involved. And if they had them under a microscope, they would have seen the little tardigrade going, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> have my wallet. Hmm. Well, they don't survive a gunshot. The explosion, I'm guessing. By the way, cockroaches don't survive gunshots either. Well, the thing is, they survive the natural things. Right. Being shot is not natural, but being frozen or heated up or whatever, that's more of a nature thing, mm. so. Yeah, Goblin, that basically is science in a nutshell. What happens when I do this? Um, Hold my beer. <laughs> a lot happens when you do that. <laughs> Ah, it's to see if they can survive <laughs> space impacts. Interesting. Well, see, yeah, because I think that's what I, I read. Uh, so, shooting them is different than them hitting something, I think. Because the force would be different. Isn't the force different when you get shot than when you, like, smack the pav pavement? Hmm. I would think so, but this sounds like we need to read up on that scientific study. Yeah, there are a lot of things that could survive a lot more radiation than us. Going back to roaches, they can also survive a lot more yeah. radiation than us. Um, again, the simple organisms over the complex organisms. <laughs> yeah, birds aren't frozen like that. And turkeys aren't flying up there where the airplanes are. I'm sorry. That's wrong. Okay. This is an interesting conversation. So what I'm getting is, as you recover from the pandemic and turn your life around and start doing all the things you should, it also includes colonizing Mars and shooting microscopic creatures. And turkey shooting. Frozen turkey well, not in the airplane. Not shooting turkey, or not turkey <laughs> shooting, but shooting turkeys at things. <laughs> it's, uh, I just love a conversation where I can learn new things. It's a, okay, so. At least somebody you, learned something. <laughs> so to read some of the comments, um, hold on, I, I gotta scroll up here. The, where was the frozen turkey thing? Space impact, says Green Goblin. Is that like testing airplanes for birds, bird hits by shooting frozen turkeys at a stationary plane? Um, and Wordwin says you're supposed to thaw the turkey first, and Green Goblin says only if you don't want to have fun. <clears throat> it's, yeah. Well, I th think if you get the turkeys, little knitted coats, they'll probably never freeze in the first place. Andrea, start knitting again. Okay. All the turkeys are well, going to need some they coats. Don't like height. They wouldn't fly that high anyway, so it's all right. The ignoble prizes. If you want to see pointless science, people study the velocity with which penguins poop. 
Yeah, I don't know where to go after that one. No. Away. <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> Back away. Ah. Oh. Penguin poop. Wow. Post pandemic penguin poop. Hmm. I know. It's uh Andrea did pick up her knitting and start knitting again. I don't know if we're gonna be able to catch Goblin points out to put a Yeah. Goblin points out that he's as fast as penguin as a penguin shit. Is that like running or competitive pooping? Oh God! No, we don't want you to expand on that. <laughs> I feel like there's some medication that might have that as a side effect. It's yeah. those chips from the nineties. Yeah. yeah, with the linoleum in them, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's why the shores, the floor is so shiny. <laughs> I had too many shit chips. I almost said shits. <laughs> yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Well, after twenty minutes, it is. Any husband is when there's housework to do, or him running for that school teacher girlfriend. Huh. <laughs> Colin says, I "Think your topic is still relevant? This is how we will reacclimate when we have to go back to real society." It's fair. Mm. Real society's gone. It's, uh... Was it ever really there? Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do we have more about the actual topic of uh, adjusting to life after the pandemic and what you do differently now than what you did pre-pandemic? Yeah, nothing is different for me except without a fucking pants. Yeah, not a lot different here. Yeah, I lived my life, you know, so. Hold on, I'm looking at the thing. I, I, I can honestly say that I'm a little bit different. I'm, I don't put up with the bullshit like I had before. Yeah. I just stop. Hopefully I'll keep up with it. Okay. Thank you, Wordwin. Oh, no, that's fair. Green Goblin says, uh, I avoided people before. Now I have a reason. I don't want to go back. <laughs> it's, uh, I really do hope people do understand that standing too close to somebody you don't know. Like when I am at work, I'm sitting at a table processing people for hiring. And there are some people who literally stand close enough that they could rest their belt buckle their peanut money. yeah they could put their junk on my table I mean they're practically grinding against the edge of the table and I'm like and this is not a job for being a stripper so that's not appropriate mm. yeah that's what they keep telling me every time I pull a piece of clothes off <laughs> it's, they pay you to put it back on it's, well they pay me by the hour so technically they pay me to take it off and then they pay me to put it back on so as long as I can do all do it in that one hour, it's okay. It's uh I mean, how many of us like to think uh when we go to the bathroom while well, on the clock they're paying us to go to the bathroom? You don't pull your clothes off in the Dollar General. Why not? We're at the store this weekend because <laughs> we don't go out much, but we actually went to do stuff. And we had to walk through a store to get to whatever. There was a guy there. And he had taken his shirt and stuff off to try on clothes in the middle of the store. It's true. And by the way, <laughs> it was Macy's that we had to go through. And there was a guy in Macy's pulling off his clothes so he was bare-chested and trying on shirts. And he I wasn't... I to do that, I think. What? I had a woman to do that at Ripping. Oh, well, yeah. In the leather booth that I worked in, I looked up one day and she was actually pulling her shirt off to try on one of the leather 
That's we have a fitting for that. Now, do you need help lacing up that vest? I'll gladly help you. <laughs> By the way, this guy in Macy's, he was with like four other people, I guess his family, and they were all like gathered around, not like blocking him from view, just judging the look. <laughs> like telling him how it looked and if you should buy it or not. Which, by the way, he didn't. It went right back on the hanger and hung right back up. At least it wasn't underwear. We weren't there the whole time. We don't know. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Well said, Andrea. You're welcome. Okay, closing thoughts on this topic, Ed? No. Nope. Live. Continue to live. Live through this one, live through the next one, continue to live. Yes, you might be risking somebody's life by getting too close to them, but they may not be here tomorrow, so fucking live. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Andrea, any closing thoughts? Quit making excuses. If you want to do it, do it. Figure it out. Marlene asks, you think there will be more people taking stuff off after pandemic because the exhibitionists haven't been seen and other normal people forget the actual for once they've left the house? <laughs> the hom naked as much as it can be anyway, so. There we go. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to come up with a closing toast. I don't know if I have anything good. I think Ed kind of said it all. So let's see what Cogsley has if I poke him with a six-foot stick. Would you like mm. butter on that, sir? He says, after hours, now with more <laughs> butter. <laughs> there we go. Um, Wordwin says, remember, if you suffer from survivor guilt, you're still alive. I do not have survivor guilt, by the way. Nope. Me neither. It's, uh, yeah. Okay, let's take us out of here. Thank you guys for all your comments. And uh, here we go with the outro. <laughs> Before we go, I want to remind everyone that you can email us at talkofthetavernshow at gmail.com to let us know your thoughts on the show's topic, suggest another topic that you'd like to hear us discuss, or just have us read a message out on air to someone in your life. Thanks for supporting the show by downloading the podcast, sharing it on social media, grabbing some shirt stickers and mugs from bit.ly slash tavern merch, or barware patches and hats from bit.ly slash tavern merch too. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash tavern merch or tavern merch and the number two. Thanks to everyone who joined us live at twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk and everyone who supports the tavern by subscribing, hosting, throwing bits, raids, and most of all, commenting. Thanks for joining us in the discussion shenanigans tonight. You are the one thing that makes the show what it is. Don't forget to join us at the tavern next week. Until then, have fun, keep learning, and be good to one another. Now, raise your glass in good cheer. Enjoy the small moments every day and steamy dreams every night. Holidays are here, and so is fashionable fitness. Gift yourself a Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 5G, a phone that folds in half to literally stand on its own. Pair it with the Galaxy Watch 4 for ultimate wellness and wow factor. Check health stats, flex personal records. Over 90 activities can be tracked, like biking, swimming, golfing, and more. Invest in yourself with tech made to crush goals. Holidays open up with Galaxy. Shop it all at Samsung.com. 5G connection and availability may vary. Check with carrier. Products sold separately. Cloud is powering tomorrow's transformative missions. Federal agencies are partnering with SAIC to help them meet these critical moments, where bold moves require confident blueprints, where you can accelerate transformation through consistency, where you can innovate forward and never look back. SAIC quickly and securely migrates large-scale workloads to the cloud with the confidence you need to assure your mission. Learn more at saic.com cloud.